Uh, good morning. I'm here this morning as an 11th hour replacement for my colleague Alex, who has gone to the Americas, uh, just to present on one wash, uh, which is the approach taken by the International Federation of the Red Cross and the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Um, it's basically a common and adaptable approach amongst uh, Red Cross National Societies to implement large-scale and long-term sustainable health and water sanitation programs. It basically involves uh, three areas. Uh, the first, to improve preparedness, early detection, response to contain cholera outbreaks. And what we recognize here is that this needs to be a multi-sector approach. So we've incorporated, obviously, the WASH department, the health department, but we also include the community engagement and accountability staff, the communication staff, and also, very importantly, which I haven't heard mentioned anywhere, the logistics staff, which is a very key part of what we're trying to do. Um, the second part is to put in place long-term programming around our WASH projects, and thirdly, advocacy, internal and external. What we wanted to do at the outset is to recognize what the comparative advantage of the Red Cross is, the Red Cross Red Crescent is. And what we realize and what other agencies tell us is that it's branches and community volunteers. We have this reach that perhaps other agencies don't have. Um, and it's also this sense of permanence as well, that we don't move on, the branches are there, they remain there, and the community volunteers remain there. It's not sort of program-led or anything. And this permanence and this presence allows us to concentrate on training and pre-positioning out of response times. So it allows us to sort of do training, do pre-positioning in branches and maybe in communities, and so to be ready for the next response. And what we're looking at here is community-based surveillance. Um, this can be as simple as having <coughs> a member of the community, a volunteer in the community who is just dealing with normal AWD cases and if that person sees a spike in cases, has somebody to inform. So it can be a sort of treatment and an early warning system combined. Um, it's community level treatment or rehydration treatment and it's uh, work around sort of household water treatment, hygiene and health promotion. Uh, the good thing is that that can be ongoing. It's not just there when the response happens. We can do this, you know, on, in monthly workshops and things in the communities. Um, just to talk a little bit about um, the WASH health approach. Um, so this combines preparedness and prepositioning uh, with long-term water sanitation hygiene programs. And this permanence, again, as I was saying, means that we can uh, work on the health and hygiene behaviours, which is perhaps the weakness where we have responses. We see internal and external advocacy is very important um, and also coordination with other partners. What we recognize is that often coordination can happen at a global level and it might even happen at a regional level, but how that translates into in-country level isn't always very clear. And so what we've done um, recently in December we had a coordination meeting in East and Southern Africa, which a number of agencies attended to try and identify key areas where we can work together, we can combine, 
where we recognise each other's strengths and work to those strengths. Rather than wanting to do everything, we recognise where our area of competence is and work on that area with the support of other agencies. So let me just update you a little. Um, we've been working with, uh, we've been in consult consultation with our Red Cross societies. Uh, we've now find that we're working in 20 high risk countries and are talking with UNICEF on uh, collaborations in those countries. Um, the first phase of One Wash is five, is basically four to five years, and we'll target five five point five million people. Um, we have a number of projects that are just starting up in Ghana and Uganda, and we have offered funds for Ghana, Malawi, and Rwanda. And what we're trying to do in these countries is to talk to. Uh, participate in national societies that have programs in these countries and try and put all these resources together to target the cholera hotspots. Um, we've also undergone a reorientation process and are in, in, in the process of coming up with a new training package for volunteers in the communities and at branch level, which will incorporate all the sectors that I mentioned earlier. Um, okay, I think that's about it. Um, if there's any sort of points of clarification, uh, I'm open for questions. <laughs>